Is anyone squeamish? Okay. Just maybe if you have food, put it down. <laughs> We're going to get through this together, though. Um, so I'm an, I'm an emergency medicine doctor, and people always say, like, I don't know if I could do ER. There's so much blood. But I think that blood is actually just level one of the disgusting things you have to come to terms with. There's piss, there's shit, there's vomit, but there's actually the ultimate, ultimate boss of disgusting things. And you ask anyone who works in the ER, we'd all agree, who's the final boss? Get ready. It's this, okay? Maggots on people. <laughs> yeah, okay. How are we doing? Just a, this is a quick check-in. Are you okay? Fine? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so there's actually a name for this. It's called myiasis. It's, uh, there's a definition. It's like the parasitic infection of the body with maggots, which grow inside the host, feed on the tissue. People have been knowing about this since the Bible. But somehow, I never learned about this in med school. I don't know if I was asleep that day in class. I don't know, but it, it was a surprise to me when I started working in the ER. And I, I'll never forget the first time I saw maggots. Um, I was in the ER and it was a, I had this patient and the, the chief complaint was foot pain. So I was like, oh, I got this. I'm an intern, so I don't know anything, but feet, like I could deal with this. I walk in the room and I already knew something was wrong because there was like, flies around the guy, nice guy. Uh, you know, didn't have a home type of guy, but very sweet guy, so I'm taking off his shoes, and I take off his socks. I should have known because his socks were, like, crusted onto him, breaking them off, and then uh, I'm, like, all digging in there, and then I see, like, white stuff squirming around on his foot, and so I'm, like, getting closer. I just don't know what it is, and then I realize it's maggots, and that's when I, I started getting lightheaded, and I'm getting nauseous, but I'm trying to pro act professional. I'm, like, great, sir, no problem, uh, yep, okay, great, and I just like walk out the door calmly, and I, I don't know, I just sat down at my computer, and I just remember I just logged into Gmail. I was just so, I don't know why. <laughs> I was just so confused, I didn't know what to do, I was so overwhelmed. <laughs> so that, that got me thinking, it was like, where do maggots come from, like, what are maggots? I, I don't know, I didn't know. So I, it turns out they're actually baby flies. Did you guys all know that? I, you knew that? Okay, I, I didn't know that. Well, now I do, but I didn't then. They're just the larval versions of flies, basically. Um, but we always talk about this in the ER, so it's like, we have, this is our locker talk, like how best to get rid of maggots. And we all have different ways. Some people like squeeze water on, you know, squirt water on them. We can use suction, we can use different chemicals, and people will, will always talk about this. But I, I see myself as a bit of a rebel. I try to think different, you know. So what am I gonna do? I don't know. I, I took a different approach. I think maybe I should just prescribe them. <laughs> to make sense of that, I gotta take a step back, okay? We gotta talk about this woman. Her name's Diana Dupuy, very nice woman. She likes to ride motorbikes. She got in an accident, broke her ankle, no big deal, was in a cast. Cast comes off, and uh, the wound is not healing right, and it's actually not looking good. It's like, instead of like a scab, it's like black and green. So she sees her podiatrist, and the podiatrist is like, man, we gotta do something about this. Uh, it's not looking good. And uh, you know, you think about it, like, actually, we, we kind of take it for granted that wound should heal, you know? But actually a lot of stuff has to happen for that to work. You know, you gotta get blood to bring oxygen and proteins and glucose and all these great nutrients down very far to get to the wound and then heal it. And sometimes if I think of like the vessels, those arteries as like roads, and sometimes if your roads aren't good, you know, you can't get the stuff there. So instead of having a scab, you know, you'll end up just that tissue will start dying and festering and stuff. So in the beginning, it looks like this. I was going to say this doesn't look so bad, but I guess I'm wrong. This is, this is how it starts, subtle. This is how it can end. Okay. All right, all right. I forget what's next. I was, I was going to say that actually what's weird is like that's called gangrene. That's like dead tissue. Actually, that's not so bad for you, weirdly enough. You can have a part of your body that's dead, but the problem is it, when it starts to rot, bacteria grow on there, 
and then start attacking the living part of you, and then you could get septic and die. I'll show you a real quick picture of what that looks like. This is what it looks like. Okay. Are you okay? <laughs> you okay? <laughs> okay. I put the warning signs up after I gave this talk in Pittsburgh and someone passed out. <laughs> so what do you do when a part of you is dying? You have to cut it off, basically amputate that limb. And that sounds like a rare thing, but anyone who works in the ER, my friends are here from the ER, like we see this all the time, right? So a lot of people, 185,000 people get their limbs amputated every year, which is crazy. So what do you do to prevent it? Basically, what do we do as doctors? We have to debride the wound. We want to cut away the dead tissue with a scalpel, separate the dead tissue out so that the living tissue stays. We want to give antibiotics, and we want to do wound care. But in Diana's you know, case, like they were doing all this, and it wasn't working. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so that's where she started going on the internet in desperation and came across this guy. His name's Ron Sherman. I gotta play a quote of this guy right now. I had been really collecting maggots from patients throughout my internship and residency. I'm not, I interviewed this guy, I'm not making up that voice. Like, that is really him. <laughs> so he's a doctor, but when he was in residency, like when, when I'm in residency, I'm either at work or I'm drinking alcohol or I'm sleeping. That's what I was doing. He, when he was not at work, he was collecting maggots from people. That's what he was doing. This guy was into bugs, let's just put it that way. But this guy's interesting because he goes to the library, this is like in the 90s, interested in maggots, starts realizing that doctors in the past used to use maggots. Um, this is fit, whatever, you get the dates. Old people used to use maggots. <laughs> but no one had studied it. So this guy, Ron Sherman, has the audacity to convince, he goes back to work and convinces 100 people with these bad wounds to let him try maggots. So he takes 50 of them and does the normal stuff. He takes the other 50 of them, does the normal stuff, and throws some maggots onto the wounds, <laughs> which is crazy. What he finds is, without maggots, 48% of wounds get debrided, 0.2 centimeters per week heal. With maggots, 80% debride, 1.2 centimeters per week healing, which is unreal, honestly. Um, okay, this is a picture from the first study, which I think this looks good because th this is bad. Maggots, better, great. And I know you don't want this, you don't want this to be your foot, but from my point of view, this is a great foot. It's a good foot. Okay. So two years later, he keeps studying this, studying it two years later, he uh, has the audacity to apply to the FDA to get maggots approved as a <laughs> medicine, whatever. Uh, what's crazier is two years later, they email him back and, or they write him back and they're like, yeah, we approve it. Like, <laughs> you proved your point. Like, though you cannot doubt these studies. So it, it represented the first time that a living thing got FDA approval, <laughs> you know. It's, ca it's classified as a medical device. It, I don't know what else to call it. So then uh, Ron Sherman, the entrepreneur, gets off to the running. He's cultivating maggots, um, breeding them, sterilizing them. That's his wife um, putting them there. And then they impregnate them onto these, like, gauzes. And you put the gauze on the wound, the maggots just crawl in there and start doing stuff. Uh, so he's like, yeah, this is his, an ad from his uh, brochure. He's like, a, he's the Jeff Bezos of maggots, basically. <laughs> so Diana convinces her doctor, can we try this? Let's order some. So I'll play a couple quotes when the maggots arrived. I didn't know how I was going to respond to them. I didn't know if it was going to make me vomit. I didn't know if it was going to make me pass out and dizzy. Do not be icked out by these creatures. They're here to help me. So... Puts, puts the maggots on the wound. What you do feel is them getting bigger and they wiggle. You can feel them wiggling around. After the first dose, the slough looked like it was almost 75% gone. And that was in just 48 hours. So now her feet perfect. are... Perfect. <laughs> I can perfect. wear stiletto high heel shoes. I ride a motorcycle. I can... It's perfect. I felt bad how I had to kill them when I released them. They're doing this great treatment to me, and the reward is death, right? I just felt so bad about that. So, so basically that got me to thinking, like, wh how the fuck is this 
working. You know, this is incredible. This is insane, right? So to figure that out, we had to sort of zoom into the maggot. We have to think like a maggot, okay? <laughs> Let's think like a maggot. What do maggots need? Well, maggots are baby flies. We talked about that, right? So they need love. They need food. Problem with dead zombie tissue is it's like beef jerky, you know? It's, it's not easy to eat. So maggots have evolved these amazing things, spines uh, on the maggot. And so as they crawl on the wound, they're sort of like, it's like if you have like hard dirt, it's turning it into like mulch, you know? So they're crawling around and loosening up this dead tissue into like dirt, which is really great because it's sort of debriding the wound just like a, a surgeon's scalpel, except way better. What else? Well, babies, they can't eat food, they need liquid. So maggots have evolved the ability to, instead of eat things and digest them, they vomit their digestive enzymes onto the wound and dissolve that dirt into like a smoothie, basically, and then they suck up the smoothie, which is pretty incredible. Um, so they liquefy and drink the dead tissue, but what's crazy is when they vomit their digestive t enzymes onto the living part of the tissue, it doesn't do anything. So it just gets rid of the dead tissue and spares the living tissue. What's even crazier, Ron Sherman figured this out, is there's this uh, protein basically in their vomit and it's actually an antibiotic, a never known antibiotic before, called, they called it lucifensin. So they basically, you know, they don't wanna get killed by the bacteria or the rot either. So they have their own antibiotic and they're spitting it onto the wound constantly. They actually found that it can get rid of MRSA, which is, if anyone works in medicine, you know, we're always struggling with MRSA. Incredible. Whoops. Um, what else? The craziest thing to me is that we talked about how like the, the main problem that leads to these wounds is vessels, the vessels leading to the wound may not be that great. Somehow these maggots are communicating with the body and inducing the body to build new blood vessels to the wound. And so no, really nobody knows how that's happening, but you see that there's more blood going to the wound. So really just incredible mechanism that leads to like um, amazing wound healing. Um, so it raises the question philosophically, right? We define myiasis as a, myiasis as a parasitic disease, or, but is it really like a symbiotic relationship? Right? I would argue the latter. So anyway, let's do a head-to-head -head comparison. <laughs> Doctors, we use scalpels, which hurt. We use antibiotics, which barely make it to the wound. We don't have antimicrobial peptides in our gut. We're usually mean. <laughs> and we charge a lot of money. <laughs> Maggots, they gently separate dead tissue and living tissue. They eat dead tissue for fun. They kill resistant bacteria with their spit. They convince your body to work harder. They're willing to die for you. And they're dirt cheap. This is like no comparison. Craziness. Despite that, only 5% of people with poorly healing wounds who are about to get amputated try maggots. And to be honest, I get it. It's f fucking disgusting, I, I understand. <laughs> but despite that, you know, it might be gross, but you know, maybe it's just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. Thank you, guys. Go to nerdnight.com to find a Nerd Night event near you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for our latest presentations.